Uh, hello everyone, I'm here with a fun little walkthrough I'm going to do on my own time and hopefully it helps you guys get in some workflow, see me debug some issues, and craft a blog up and running from the Covalence React Boilerplate DB that is handed to you guys for the upcoming labs. So let's go ahead and dive in. All I've really done is downloaded this zip, unzipped it to um, a directory on my drive, and I've ran an npm install and an npm run dev one time to confirm that everything installed correctly and it runs a local host correctly. So again, let's just dive on in and start coding away. So let's go. Cool, so they provide some basic routes for you guys. I like to just remove this guy and delete that guy, don't need it. Therefore, we won't need this doing that because this is where our index.js exports our routes to be universally used under slash API. And that's where they're being imported from here. We shall look into the in routes index.js and look for any routes here. So we're going to create our own one for, let's say, blogs.js. There's some quick scaffolding. We're going to import express, but we're going to only import router from the express package. We're going to say let router equal router. There we go. Router.get. And we're going to just do a really simple test here to make sure this guy is wired up and running correctly. Hello there. We're going to export this guy for use other places. This is the simplest possible router we can make. All it does is accept one get request to the home route, and then it sends a response that says, hello there. Cool, and now we have to import it for use here. So we're gonna import blogs router from this directory. Now oh, I can't spell. I was like, why is it red underline? Import blogs router from this directory slash blogs.js, sick. And now this router is going to be using that blogs router. So we guess what? We get to do, nope, not app, not app, not app. It's router.use middleware, because that's all routes are, and routers are, are more middleware. So this router is going to use a middleware, which will be another router. So we specify the route for it, and we're going to call it blogs. And then it's going to use the setup from within there. Cool. So now that's wired up. So going our way down, it's going to be in server slash source slash index.js. This is where we create our express server API. We have one route programmed for general use called slash API that goes down to here, which will use anything we've wired up in here. As of right now, we have one. So it's slash API slash blogs and anything within here that we begin to specify, which the home slash should just say hello there. Uh, I'm a huge proponent of taking a baby step and then testing to see if it works. So we're going to go ahead and run dev, see if this compiles without any problems. And we're going to use Postman to test this route just to make sure it's all wired up correctly. So like I've scaffolded out what a routes, what route I'm going to use on my API. And before I go into anything more complicated than that, it's just a good idea to compile and take a gander. Cool. As you can see, I've already been helping other folks with their labs by having these get and post requests slash API slash chirps, just like in our previous labs. <laughs> I spent my plenty of time already helping out over here. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to delete this and make a fresh one so you guys don't think what I'm doing. Don't wonder what I'm doing with the headers there. That was just from the previous request I had made. So we're going to do a get request. Our host will be, our URL will be localhost3000 slash API slash blogs and the home route should just have that response and there it is hello there hi server cool so that's a solid test to get underway with and to confirm it's also running the front end stuff correctly if we go to localhost 3000 we should see the very simple hello world and goodbye world components that they have wired up for us in this boilerplate again a good indication that everything's probably running as it should be yes cool um i actually haven't taken the time to create 
the database yet, so I guess that's the next part we'll go ahead and do. I'm actually opening up, well, I should have opened up Gravity a minute ago, but I'm doing that on my left monitor while we do this together here. And I'm trying to find the lab where this is required. There we go. I was pulling up this as a reference just so I can make sure I hit the, the high points with you guys as we code through this together. So I've got my SQL Workbench open, ready to go. We're going to be doing this in development, so we don't really need to connect into some kind of special online um, database. This is actually an instance of one of my deployed ones in Heroku that I can actually connect to right here and make some queries with and test some, test some stuff out with. But we're going to be working out of localhost, so we're going to double click into here. As you can see, I really don't have a lot going on here. I, all I have is a test schema that I have you know, downloaded my SQL Workbench and tested with, and that's all I've actually gotten done. So we're really doing this from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new schema, and we're going to call it personal blog or something like that. Just something real easy and obvious what we're doing. And since I'm not an expert in MySQL syntax, it's always kind of cool to see what it's about to execute so you can take a look and see if you can read it and make sure you understand what's going on. Cool. Wow, something actually worked without crashing the first time. I'm somewhat impressed. <laughs> so something that I always forget to do is double clicking on the schema you want to use. It'll give it that bolded text right there, meaning if you write select statements from that local table, you'll be able to pull stuff up from it. Like this is the default one it's not going to be using if we've been writing queries for it, right? And it won't be adding stuff into the schema by mistake if we create tables. So now we're going to create a table here under personal blog and we'll get underway. So create table. Uh, first one, we're going to be calling it blags. Table name blogs, blah, blah, blah. And let's start out. It's going to have a column name of ID, which will be an int, primary key, not null, and auto incrementing. Then we'll have one for title, which will be a var car. This will make it 255 for now, whatever. Uh, blogs will have to have a title, so I'm going to make it not null. Then we're going to have a content section. And we'll also make it a var car, and we'll say 255 characters is the max for each blog post. Oops, that was a mistake. Well, actually, we'll need that in a second. But this guy, well, it'll make more sense if our titles are, say, like, under 60 characters. That'll, that'll make more sense. And then you can't have an empty blog content, so that's not a possibility. Now we're going to do our underscore created. This isn't necessary, but it's always nice to have, especially if you have to order things by, like, when they were added. So if you want to have your newest blogs first, you can write a query for that, right? And created is going to be a timestamp, date time. What was it? As you can see, it's been a while since I've done this. Date time. Is that a valid thing? Why does it do that? Cut there. Is that valid? Well, it looks right. Date time. Interesting. Huh. Funky, but fair enough. And we're going to make a default of current time stamp and apply. It should be a date time. I'm going to double check that in Google before I continue to make sure I don't throw myself for an error already. And yeah, that should be right. So let's apply and see what happens. Executed correctly, sick. Um, since we created this table successfully, let's just do a really, we'll refresh our schemas down here. So clicking this little refresh button, refresh, refresh button, if it wanted to work. Should refresh all, nothing's happening, lovely. Refresh all. Nothing's happening. My favorite. Apply changes to blogs. Table name, blogs. Schema, personal blog. Apply changes to blog, changes applied. Don't save, I don't wanna want do the same thing. Select all from blogs. Let's just see what happens if I run this query. Zero rows return because there's no information. That's peculiar, so let's actually do an insert into blogs, and we're going to do a title and some content. And it's going to have some values. There's going to be some strings. This 
is a blog title. This is some blog content, exclamation point. Let's get fun. I'm going to highlight this and run this query. And it's inserted, so now if I highlight select all from blogs, it should return one row, which it did, but it's not outputting anything. And I think this is part of the fun of using MySQL Workbench. So we're going to exit out of that pile of garbage and restart it real quick. Let's try that again. Well, 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 look what we see now. Love it. Uh, coding's fun. Select all from blogs. There we go. And the timestamp worked as expected. Hell yeah. That's a nice change of pace when things actually worked out the way I wanted them to. Sick. Okay, so let's create the next table. Create table. Uh, authors. That sounds good. Create table authors. And it's going to have, just like before, an ID. That'll be type int, primary key, not null, auto incrementing. It will have a name. Which will be, we'll say, Varkar 60 character name. If you have a name longer than that, you are SOL. They have to have a name for an author. And they have an email, which also I'm going to limit to 60 characters. Then they have to have an email. And then we'll have a underscore created. Date time. Ha ha ha. I gotta learn to stop hitting enter. There we go. Default expression will be our current time snap sick apply apply ggs come back oh look i actually added it this time without having to refresh that's that's nice <laughs> cool well let's insert some info into it and i'm just going to go ahead and co-op this guy so we're going to switch to the authors table the authors table required a name and it also required an email and I'm going to get real creative with this one. We're going to call my name test. <laughs> and I'm going to have an email of test at test.com. Very fancy. So we're going to run this guy here. Run it. Looks like it ran correctly. As always, we've done the small steps. So let's test it. Select all from authors. Oh, Workbench. This is going to be fun. I love MySQL Workbench. Select all from authors. There we go. Confirmed. All is running as is expected. Now, I know we're supposed to have a tags and blog tags table, but that's for more for the advanced section, and I'll probably do a follow-up video for that. I'm going to try and keep this simple to get y'all going super fast. Cool. Um... We've got that going, which is awesome. We'll probably want a couple more blog posts to actually make this relevant and worthwhile, but for now it is what it is. Oh, well, you know, I say that. Let's, let's go ahead. Insert into blogs. They have a title and some content. I'm another blog title, exclamation point there for randomness. The content will be, I don't know, I'm some other content. Okay. And let's see, I'm pretty sure this was the syntax for it if I wanted to insert multiple values, right? Who shot first? Han or Greedo? Just to mess with anybody. Is it a comma? Or maybe I don't need the values over and over again, do I? No, I don't. Is a comma even necessary? I don't remember. Looks like that might be. I don't know if this will work, and it's kind of embarrassing if it won't, but let's give it a shot. Two rows affected. Blogs. Select. Yes. Actually, we're first time! That never happens. All right, so now we actually have a couple couple posts of content, so we can actually have something cool here. All right, so uh, that's about as simple as we can possibly get down here in our blogs, in our, in our tables, rather. So that is a good stopping point, and let's go ahead and create a user that's going to be logging into this guy. You don't want to use our root and local host guys to log into these schemas, because if somebody gets a hold of that, they can start altering and changing anything across our entire 
MySQL with our root user access. So typically you create a new user to have access to this to try and limit some of his possibility, like possible stuff that he can do to, to mess around with your, your um, schemas. So login name, we'll call him blog app, authentication, standard, whatever, whatever, password, blog app, confirm as blog app, weak password, so be it. For, let's see, schema privileges, we're going to add an entry. And he's going to have access only to personal blog. That sounds good to me. And we're going to select all except for our grant option, which, as you can see, it allows the, that per, that this user to change other people's users' access, and we don't want to give them that. That's why it says select all in quotes and doesn't actually apply everything. So we're going to apply, and now we should have a blog app. And I think I forgot to change that. Make sure I don't mess anything up. Limits host to matching anything. Well, I mean, it's going to be on localhost, right? Local, hot, local host. Apply. That makes more sense. Okay, cool. Uh, that should be really all we need from here. So now we have a schema with privileges with a user called blog app and a password called blog app, and it goes to localhost. So that should be good enough for Workbench. I'm going to minimize that for now, and now we're going to head back to our server code. So like our bottom piece of the puzzle, which is our MySQL database, is... I just realized there's something white right here. I think that's where my green screen might be ending, or something it's not liking. So apologies for whatever this thing is right here. But anyway, we're going to come back here and try and connect this to make sure we don't have any issues. The boilerplate has all this coded out for us, so we're just going to go ahead and use it. Host is indeed localhost. We created a guy called blog app. Password is going to be blog app. And our database, I believe I called it personal underscore blog. And there we go. That should complete everything we need to do for our configuration, theoretically. Of course, whether it works or not will be an entirely different story. The, we also have this table.js, which I can import wherever I'd like to and link it to a new table and be able to run all these methods. So my favorite one is just to, believe it or not, run a quick get all to make sure that's what happens. So we're going to import... I think it was table from up to slash table. And then underneath our router, we're going to say, or it doesn't matter where it is. It's just going to be a global variable. Let um, blogs equal new table, which will be blogs. For some reason, I feel like I'm forgetting something here. I think that's correct, because we construct a new table class, and then we pass in the table, right? Yeah, that should be right. Okay, that makes sense to me, trying to think it out. Well, let's just see what happens, shall we? Uh, so instead of just sending back the phrase, hello there, let's send back a response of all of our current blogs. So blogs is our variable that has the new table class in there. Table class should have a get all that doesn't take any arguments and should return all of our blocks. So now this will let us know if our database is hooked up correctly. So we're going to bring back Postman here. API slash blogs. Uh oh, I had an error. It's not, oh, okay. It was just watching my error, my, my port errors. It was watching as I was typing. So I had an, it tried to compile this and obviously that got an error and then it did it over again and had a, a new one. At least that's what I think is happening. Okay, something failed. My favorite. We're going to run an entirely new instance to try and find out where we messed up. Maybe it compiled the wrong stuff. Okay, let's try again. Okay. Lovely backfire. This is a promise, so maybe... That's what it is. I'm pretty sure these guys are promises, so I can't actually send that as a direct response. So we're going to run that here and then chain in a dot then. We're going to get some kind of response from our promise chain here. And we're going to just go ahead and do some kind of function, which guess what? If that promise resolves, then it will indeed just be sending back that response. 
Now let's see what happens. There we go. That's what I messed up. Always something, I'm telling y'all. <sighs> cool beans. So we are indeed connected up to our database, and I've written my first query using table.js and connecting to blogs. So as you can imagine, before I get any further, there's two ways we can do this. We can actually specify like an optional parameter and do an if else statement, or you can write it out into two bits of code. I personally like to keep it separate. This makes it easier to kind of like parse out, pun intended, in my head. Okay, and that'll have a rec and a res, which will fire something off for us. I don't know what just happened there. There we go. Okay, so let's test it. Blogs.get1. And if we pass in a rec.params.id, which again, the request will come into this route, and then params.id is pulling off an object that has a key of id on there that should match up with the number we pass in. And to not make the same mistake above, I know now this is a promise, which will be a response from the database that will fire off a function of some kind, which, guess what? It's going to be res.send response. Same thing. Auto format. There we go. Beautiful. So looking at our previous set of responses, the ID of one should be, this is a blog title, this is some blog content. And let's go. Confirmed, it's working. It sends one back one object, which is our one post. Lovely. Cool. Before I even get into inserting and updating, let's see if we can't just start making this work on the front end. Why really overcomplicate things back here when we have something very simple already running for us? I'm gonna close that collapse my server directory to make it easier to read, come into source, components, that looks easy and good, that's exactly what it should be, and then over yonder. I personally like having my components also with a capital letter, I think it's just, I mean, evidently it works either way, but I just like having capital letters for my components, so I'm going to delete these two, move to recycle bin, Come back to our app.js. These two will be useless now. They already have React Writer DOM brought in for us, which is nice. They have a link up here, which we're actually going to move out into a nav bar for us, because I don't want to have to do it all in one file. There we go. Exact path to home will be, let's say, our blogs list component that I'll be making here in a second. I'm going to delete that guy for now. I'll bring in the nav bar stuff in a minute for now. Let's just keep it real simple. And just because I told you guys I prefer having it this way, I'll have to update my there, <laughs> update my imports. So now let's wire it up. New file, blogs list.jsx. It's going to import React from React. So we are you can use some JSX and a return statement in here. Uh, I'm going to start it out as a functional component and upgrade to a class component only if necessary. Now, this is not necessary at our stage in the game. Just consider it just like basic optimization as you move forward. Um, if I don't have to do anything with state, then I don't bother making it a class component because it makes the syntax a lot easier to read. It makes the whole thing a lot easier to read if you don't have to use it as a class component. So, it's going to be a JavaScript function that returns JSX. So, we're going to have const blogs list. Might take some arguments later, don't know. It's going to do a function that will return, for now, it's going to return some JSX, which I'm going to make as a hello from a blogs list. And this, as some of you folks have seen, my most simple possible like wiring up and scaffolding of a React component to test with. This looks pretty good. Very good starting point for testing out. We have to import it here for use import blogs list from this directory slash blogs list there we go so now it is all wired up and ready to go we might need to do a restart in our server since i've changed some file architecture so just to be safe we're going to do that npm run dev and let it rebuild all this stuff with the new code we have okay let's on port 3000 open up our document refresh Oh, nothing's there because I'm on the old route of goodbye, which we no longer have programmed our switch. Now we come back to the home route, and, and boom, we there. We living, y'all. We living. All right. Good starting point. Great starting point. So let's go back to our code and make it actually do something a bit cooler than this, right? 
Now, even though I said I like starting out in functional components, I just know off the top of my head with the way the React workflow goes that when this component will mount to the DOM, I'm going to want to do an API request of some kind, right? That makes sense. And that would require a lifecycle method, which are only available on React components. So let's go ahead and just start upgrading this guy before I even get that far. So we're going to bring in component now from React and fragment from React. Uh, this is not necessary. We can just write react.component and react.fragment down here, but I like keeping it simple and just having a single word component and a single word fragment. Personal preferencing, again, doesn't actually matter. So const will change to class. Arrow function will change to extends the parent class of component. And you cannot have a return method unless it's inside a render method of some kind. Wrap it up. We'll call it upgraded blogs list, yeah? upgraded to class component. So we made a small change. And you know what, just for funsies, let's go ahead and throw our fragment on this guy, just to make sure that doesn't throw any errors either. Cool. There we go, we've made a small change and we're gonna test it to make sure it works. Nope, here, got it, no problem. Um, yeah, like I said, we make small changes, we make small incremental changes and test them as we move along. That way, if we write like 30, 40 lines of code, if something breaks, it'll be a lot easier to backstep where we were going rather than coding that much and then trying to decipher where it might have gone wrong, you know? So now I know we'll need a component lifecycle method, which are built into all React component class is component will mount. So right before, the, when this thing is going to mount into the DOM, let's do our fetch. It's gonna be a fetch and it's gonna to be to localhost 3000, but because that's our base URL, we can make a relative URL call here. API slash blogs should get us all blogs. Dope. It's gonna be a promise, so it's gonna chain a dot then. Uh, that's gonna be some kind of response from the server, which I believe will be in JSON format, so I can actually do this in one line, and because it's one return, we don't need those curly braces, and we're gonna say response dot JSON, and that converts it from a JSON to a readable and usable JavaScript object, which we can then do stuff, some stuff with. So then, whatever that result will be is what we want. So it's going to be a blog list, camel case, and you'll see why I'm doing this in just a second. And it's going to have to do something with that. And when this guy just is about to mount to the DOM and it gets this information and it sets it to state that triggers our render and it'll actually come out here with what we want. So we're gonna need access to state. And when you do that, we're gonna to have to go ahead and write our constructor that might receive some props at some point and pass back up some props at some point. This, this is, I consider this like my quote unquote boilerplate for accessing our state object. I just write this without thinking about it and then expand what's needed. So let's call our key blog list or blogs list plural since that's what it is and again it's going to be an array that's what our entire set of blogs are right so now that we have that wired up we can come down here and be able to write a this dot set state format there we go and our set state obviously would be a, our state key of blogs list is going to set we're going to set that state with this response of blogs list. So blogs list is equal to blogs list. Now, what's cool about um, ES6 syntax is that the key and the value are the same thing in an object. We can actually shorthand it down to just this. And then boom, and there you go. Oh, no, don't forget, we gotta write our dot catch. If there's an error, then let's console dot log template literals, error, getting all blogs, and the error that it catches. Now we can end that promise chain. Looks pretty good thus far. Yeah, 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 and let's check out what's going on right now. So we come back to our code here, or not our code, our browser, and click refresh. Hopefully that's enough time for it to realize and rebuild the uh, the changes we made in the front end. I have the React extension installed here. 
cool. So we have this component right here that should have, where is it? Hello from ROG's upgrade list, right? That's the component. Oh, this is backfiring. There's a state for matching it. Oh, there it is. I'm blind, there it is. So this is the state that's available on our blogs list component currently. And it should be, yeah, uh, the same response we got from our server. So now we know we have it wired up to state correctly and the component lifecycle method is working as expected. So now we can go back down here and do some more fun code. So I'm actually gonna write this out into a helper method because I like keeping things separated like that very for in case we need reusability or being able to read inline code down here would be a lot easier if we have helper methods doing the brunt of the work for us. So we're going to call it render blogs. And what it's going to do is it's going to take the value of this dot state dot blogs list, which is an array. So arrays have a map function that can return a function or return a new JSX component, which is what we need it to do. Um, here we give it an argument of whatever we specify that will represent a single element from the array. If we have a list of blogs in an array, it's safe to assume that each individual element will be one blog. That'll be an arrow function and it's going to return some JSX. For now, we're going to keep it real simple and just return another H1. And if you recall from our server response, each blog had a title. So I think that's a good spot to start. So each blog element is actually just an object. And to get information off an object, we would break out of the JSX with these curly braces because we're going to do some JavaScript now. We have our blog object that happens to have a dot title on it. So now returning this and calling the function down here, like so, this dot render blogs, and we want to invoke it right away. So when this thing will mount, it should do this fetch call, resolve this promise chain, set a state. That way, when it's time to render, it goes down here and attempts to render this dot render blogs, which is our this dot state dot blogs list dot map, and it should just return our three blog titles. Which what what where are they at the top of my head? I can't remember. Just to confirm what we're gonna see. This is a blog title. I'm another blog title. Who shot first? All right, cool. Let's check it out. Well, that backfired. How nice is that? No error, and it didn't work. My personal favorite. Mm -mm -mm. What has gone wrong? Hmm. Okay. I wonder if it didn't like me doing a helper method. So instead of that, let's rock this, fix the formatting, comment this out in case it's causing any errors, which I don't know why it would. Let's see what happens now. That's weird. I'll investigate why that didn't work a minute ago, because that's normally what I do and I don't have issues. It might be either a translation error with Babel or Babel, whatever you call it. So I know it works on Create React app as I've shown some students how to do that, but talk about your old time backfires, right? I'll look into why that's not working for now, but so we'll just inline it for, for now and just call it a day. So you probably don't want to write a whole bunch of extra JSX right here, and this is where that component-based thinking will help come into play. Meaning, let's create a component that helps us actually render what we're trying to do here. And sorry, my mouse lost its DPI settings as I clicked the wrong button, and there we go. I can actually switch my mouse sensitivity with the hotkey on my mouse, so I bumped it by mistake and everything was going haywire on me there. So now we're back in action. Cool, um, as I was saying, let's break the return of this. Instead of doing a bunch of code in here to return, let's just break it out into a component that does the work for us. So I'm gonna create a new component and we're gonna call it blogcard.jsx something simple because it's going to be our virtual representation of each and every single blog. Again, we're going to do our basic boilerplate for wiring up a React component, import React from React. I'm going to start it off as a class component, blog card. This one will receive some props because that's the whole point of it, right? So it's going to take some props. It's going to return some amount of JSX. And again, let's test it. Hello from blog card. 
exclamation point, export default, blog card. That's all wired up and ready to go. To actually test it, let's bring it into our parent component, which will be the blog list. Import blog card from this directory slash blog card. Cool. So now down here, if instead of returning three H1 titles, let's return three instances of blog card. And they will, so we should see three H1s from hello from blog card that represents each element in our array. Cool. Actually worked, how nice is that? Uh, okay, cool. Now we're gonna, if we had an ES linter, it would tell us it doesn't like this because we have no distinction between three instances of our blog card components. So as you guys remember, React components have a special attribute called key that can be a unique value. And as it stands, we have one right now called ID. So like our database is structured to where the IDs on these guys will auto increment and they have to be, the, so they won't have any kind of overlap, right? So because it's coded to have unique IDs, we can actually use the object blog and its key of ID to be a unique key for each of these guys. So even though the console log is not showing an error, it gives these guys a unique key for faster targeting re-rendering from the DOM if React has to do something like that. So now let's actually do something cool with the blog card component instead of just spitting out three random H1s. So I'm actually opening up the bootstrap documentation on the left side of my screen or the left side of my screen, the left monitor I have, so you guys aren't seeing it, but what I'm trying to do here is just bring in a super basic card that we can bring in to do some work with. So I'm gonna paste over this with the card. I'm going to auto format it, and we know that we have to have class name and not class. So what I'm doing here is I'm selecting class, I'm highlighting it, and I think it was Apple D, or Command D on OS X, but on Windows it's Control D, and that'll highlight every instance of the word class that I've highlighted. And that way, as you can see, I can type in name across all of them to save myself some time. Now, I don't care about these anchor tags at the moment. Um, I can say we cannot do this inline styling like this. React won't accept that. So what we wanna do is instead replace it with, we're gonna break out of JSX, with JavaScript, so we use our curly braces. And then to accept a style, it has to be another object as the argument, AKA another set of curly braces. And this is where we can do width, and the value will be a string of 18 rems. Now we can delete this. Auto format, there we go. That's looking pretty good. And before I start trying to do anything fancy with it, again, let's just go see if it spits out three of these guys in our code. Hooray, it worked. Uh, I don't like the column stuff like that. So we're actually gonna make this even more complicated than it probably needs to be. So how about we do, since this will be displaying our container of, of our blog list, let's add our div here. It's gonna wrap our map, accidental rhymes are my favorites. It's gonna have a class name of guess what? Container fluid, I think is what it was. And then we're gonna nest, oh boy, here we go. A div that will have a class name of row. I think you can actually do row calls, right? You can do row calls individually, but whatever. We're gonna remove that closing tag and move it down and format it so it indents everything correctly. And technically each blog card will be its own column. So let's just do that. And we'll say each one it'll be a call three or something like that. That should work. And so we should have one, two, three. And because it goes up to 12 columns, we should be able to have four side by side without any issue. There we go. So it can fit a fourth one here before it will auto wrap down, I'm fairly certain. Oh boy. <laughs> there we go. I haven't specified a breakpoint, so that's what it's going to end up doing, but whatever. I now have that working, and let's give these guys like a margin of one between each guy. Space them out a little bit. Mm. 
Oh, there it goes. Sometimes it takes a second for it to rebuild your code, but now you can see a little nice spacing going on right there, right? So now we can actually do something cool. We have these represent each of our blog posts, but we don't want them to say card, title, card, subtitle, and stuff like that. So let's actually have it be our blogs. Um, so again, you know, we had we can pass down a prop into blog card, and it can actually be an entire object. It doesn't have to be something like title equals blog dot title, and then you know content would equal blog dot content. You know that works fine for a small example lab like this, but imagine your object had 20 keys on it. You wouldn't want to have to create a prop for each key. So if you didn't know this, you can actually pass down an entire object. So I'm going to say I'm going to pass a prop called blog, and we're going to pass in each individual blog object. So now down here, we have access to props.blog.title because props is an object that comes built into React stuff. We're passing down a prop called blog from the top end, and each blog happens to have a title on it. Now, what I am forgetting, though, are the curly braces. There we go. And that should work. Let's check it out. Oh, give it a second to, what's it called? And it's to refresh our code here. So underneath the hood here, when it detects a change, it has to rebuild it. So sometimes it doesn't quite catch up. So mashing that refresh button is something you're going to find yourself doing a lot. Hey, hey, there we go. We are now seeing our blogs as expected. Dope. Cool. So we could do the same here. Eventually, I'm going to call this like author placeholder because I'll let you guys handle that actual that aspect. Or I can do a follow-up walkthrough of how I'd handle it. But we'll call it author placeholder for now since eventually that's what you want. Or you can have like tags placeholder. That might make more sense. There we go. Tags placeholder. And down here we'd have props.blog.content. Now, again, if we had a crap ton of keys on our blog object, which as of right now we don't, so this is an unnecessary refactor, but in something that is cool that with ES6 syntax that you guys can do is something like this. Let's say we're going to pull off and create at the same time, some values from props.blog, and we want title and content from it. So let's just say, hey, pull off the value of title and the value of content, and create some JavaScript variables that are also objects that have that in there, that have these values pulled off the props.blog object. So now down here, instead of having to write this, we can just write the word title. And as you can imagine, right down here, we can open and close our curly braces and just write content. And that's a clean inline way of writing your components by doing some what's called destructuring right here. I like doing it. Makes me feel real fancy when I pull it off. Refresh. We got it, y'all. We got it. That's dope. Super dope. OK, um, what else can I demo real quick about wiring up your applications here? Ooh, check it out. So let's say we ha wanted to click on one of these guys, and it might take us to um, a single instance of this blog. Let's say this content was like the full 255 characters, but I didn't want to show it all here. I just had like some kind of preview, right? And I think it, we, if you have a string, which was content, so you know blog dot content is a string value. I think we can actually do a dot substring or substra. I think that's correct. Let me Google it before I make a fool of myself, which at this point I'm quite used to. So string substring JavaScript. Okay, it's dot substring, and it takes two arguments. It can take two arguments. All right. Now I was hoping IntelliSense would kick in, but it is what it is. Uh, it's going to start at the beginning of our string, and this represents the index positions in the string, right? So, for example, the, uh, this t is spot zero, and this exclamation point would be the end of the string length. So let's say we wanted to only show like five letters or something like that. I mean, this is impractical for as short as these, as short as these blog posts are, but this is what you'd probably see on a website, right? So that's the JavaScript we're going to print out. We're going to print out the first from position zero to position five characters in whatever string content is. And we'll do like a dot, dot, dot to, sim to symbol symbolize that's a, a preview of our entire blog post. There it is, right? So again, because of the, <laughs> my content was 
uh, impractically short. This is kind of dumb, but it's just demoing the concept for you guys. So if you did actually have blog posts in this blog, this is what you do to like show a preview, and then it makes sense to have a link to take it to um, a single blog card somewhere. Okay, well that's pretty good. We have that wired up and working for us and doing some heavy lifting. And so now let's say if we had a link here, which of course I deleted those anchor tags earlier because I didn't need them, but I think we can just put it below this paragraph tag and be good to go. We can't use anchor tags to navigate um, with browser router and navigating between what component to render. Anchor tags don't have that reference, but our link tags are wired up into our browser router here and to our switch and they do have access to that kind of stuff. And so in order to use one of those, all we gotta do is import and we're gonna pull only link because we don't care about everything from that library. All we care about is link from React Router DOM. And this handy gandy guy is gonna replace our anchor tags in React. So it's gonna navigate to, we're gonna call it a path of single, yeah, single blog or something like that. And then it's gonna have a parameter attached to it. So I'm actually gonna remove the double quotes and do back ticks so I can do some string concatenation, which that is JavaScript, so we have to break out like so. There, don't autocomplete that. There we go. Two single blog, and it's just like a button, so it needs a closing tag, and it goes um, click for full post or something like that, I don't know. And it's going to pass in a optional parameter, but we don't actually type this optional parameter here. We want it to be dynamic based on whatever we are actually navigating to, right? And so don't forget, every single blog that comes in has an ID available that we can reference. This ID will match up with, with what it is in the database. So when you go to deleting and editing blogs, you actually have something that matches out in a route param, something you can pull up in a shallow component, and something that also matches up to what's in your database if you had to edit it or delete it. So we don't type in this, we, what we type in is a template literal. It's gonna be a value of ID. Cool. So now we also have to wire it up in our switch, otherwise it won't know what we're talking about. So we're gonna do route. I think we can just do path in this instance, and it's gonna be slash single blog, with an optional parameter that we have hard coded here. So it's dynamic. So it's not hard coded, it's dynamically coded. And it's gonna load a component, which will be, let's say like single blog or something. I don't know. We'll start with that. I haven't created it yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and import it and assume and make some assumptions about it, right? So single blog from single blog, which I'll make momentarily. There we go. Looks pretty good. Let's close that out. We're donezo here, and we'll work out if we might look at look back to this in just a second. So let's create that component of single blog.jsx. And then I, you don't have to do it this way, but I'm going to handle the, the problem this way of we could theoretically pass extra props along with our link tag, which is this guy's props. But I'm just going to make it easy on myself and just do another fetch on a component will mount for a single blog. Um, th this is, again, I think comes down to preference. A lot of folks don't like making a ton of unnecessary API calls, so they might actually make like a universal API call and just filter information down to children components. I'll take the easy way out, by just, and for especially for keeping this video short. I'm going to do... Uh, I'm going to make another fetch, which will require a component lifecycle, which will require state, which means we have to have a class component. So import React, and we're going to bring in component and fragment from React. Booyakasha. There we go. Class single blog extends component. It's going to have some kind of render method, which will have a return. I don't know why I'm going in an accent all of a sudden. And like I said before, let's test it before we do anything fancy. Uh, hello from single blog. Export default. Single blog. I can't type. Single blog. Boom. Booyah. There we go. So now there's a couple different ways we can test to see if we've actually done this correctly. Um, I'm not sure if changing files or not is like adding files to our directories is picked up on by our watch 
our npm run dev script. So we're just going to recompile it just in case it's not. Cool. Let's check it out. Nope, not that screen. This one. Refresh. Click for full post. All right. We've got it wired up. It goes to single blog slash one as the local route, and it renders the single blog component, which is just an h1 that says that. If you check it out, that param was auto-coded to one. So this one should be two, and this one should be three. So now we have our blog card component correctly spitting out the ID to the route parameter. So we now have that correctly linked up. And as a cool example, it's actually passed down as a prop. So let's do a this.props because this guy is built with some props. Uh, this is actually provided for us by, not here, by our browser router that we call router. Uh, browser router has a match uh, prop. It was just an object that's on props that is provided for children components as they render. So because it came with a match to this, so like because our link tag said, hey, go to slash single blog slash single blog slash optional or a parameter ID. Uh, when it matches this, it stores that match in a match object. So we have this.props.match.params because if we want access to this parameter, the match object has a .params key on there. There is another object that has a key of ID because that's what we called it. So if we called this colon pizza instead of id, we would have params.pizza here instead of params.id. But again, we've done something pretty cool and dynamically coded here, so let's check if it works. So if I refresh this page, we are in a parameter of three, and this should say single blog three. Cool. And that's now how we are posting down or pulling down a parameter between components here and how we can actually have this have some cool dynamic stuff to it. There we go. We got it wired up and working, y'all. Got it wired up and working. Always a great start to keep it real simple and move upwards from there. So, like I said, let's go ahead and do the required syntax to have some state here. Nope. So this dot state, oh my god, I can't type, equals some kind of object. And we're going to call it single blog. Now, if you guys recall from our postman test, this returns an array of blogs, but if we specify one single blog, it returns an object. So that's where I'm going to make my state an object and not an array this time. You could do it as an array and push to it, and then all you have to do is just access the index position zero to get that information. But I'm just going to mindfully wire it up to be similar. That way I don't have to do too much work. So component will mount. When this sucker is about to go to the DOM, we're going to run our fetch, which will be, I'm going to do template literals here because it's going to be fun. It's going to be slash API slash blogs slash, and again, like I had over here in my test, slash one brought up the first blog, slash two brought that up. And don't forget, like, these parameters are, routed, are matched up with our IDs coming back from our database, which is why I had all these parameters linked up for us and why I demoed this guy showing that they all matches up via our router and it matches up to our ID of our blog post, which means we can do a template literal up here, up dollar sign brackets, bam. And that'll now do dynamically fetch requests just like we were doing here a second ago. So if we clicked on the first blog, it would do slash single blog slash one, which would then do an API call to slash API slash blog slash this dot props dot mash dot params dot ID, which happens to be the value one and do a fetch call to this, which will get us our single blog post. So now it's all wired up and working correctly. So just do a dot, dot then. We're going to get some kind of res JSON response, which we're going to have to convert. Well, there we go. And then it'll be a dot then. And it's going to be a single converted blog. And it's going to fire a function of this dot set state. And again, because we're using ES6, single blog, with a value of single blog can be reduced down to just single blog. Boom. And for good measure, let's do our catch. Template literal error getting single blog error. Error. There we go. Booyah. Looking good, looking good. Uh, uh, uh. 
Refresh. Woo, error is not defined. I'm sure you guys are screaming at me. Oh my god, yeah, look at that. I don't know, I didn't miss that. There we go. Man, I, I messed up a lot. I didn't even write the console log. I just went straight to the template literal. My god. You guys are all probably yelling at me as you watch me code that and attempt to go test it, but it just shows that we all fall into the same traps. There we go. Back and running, back and running. So let's go to React. All right, let's expand the screen a little bit. Uh-huh. 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 Yep, yep, yep. Cool. So this shows the props of our component that's being rendered here. And so we check it and it's mapped or not mapped. It's correctly updated state with blog two, two, which is on some other content, if you guys recall. And you also see here, here's some other props that are available. And there's the match I was talking about that has a params object, which has ID two. There's also a history one that if you guys haven't played with, history is also pretty cool. So you'd have this dot props dot history and some things you can do. And if you haven't done this before and noticed, these props are functions. Props don't have to be just static values of like an integer or a string or something like that or a boolean. They can be entire functions you pass down. And this dot props dot history dot replace is a function that fires off that can actually replace the route up here with something we specify. So if we said replace back to the home route and we had a button that did that, it'd go back to here for us if we clicked it, which I can demo here in a second if anyone or if anyone's here. I don't have anyone to talk to. I'm just I can just demo it for fun. Why not? Cool, so now that we have that wired up, let's actually do some work down here. Let's go ahead and put in our fragment, Coolio. And we don't have to map anything, so we don't have to do any crazy JavaScript. All we're gonna have to do is some basic wiring up, which I'm actually gonna copy this code. I wanna make it I wanna keep it consistent among my cards and not have a bunch of random ones all over the place, right? I don't know why I had to do I have to have that space. I can't, I can't, I can't help it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Paste that in. And we're going to have to change a couple of things around. Format this guy here. Instead of a specified width, um, it's just going to be pretty much most of the screen. So I don't care about all that stuff. And let's make it, I don't know, like 75% of screen width. Something like that. Keep it fun. So, you know, title will be this dot state dot single blog dot title. But guess what? Because that's an object, we can do some destructuring beforehand to make this a bit cleaner in our code. So it's going to be a, we're going to need a title and a content to come off this dude, like so. And it's going to be pulled off of this dot state dot single blog. Boom. So now let's reduce this garbled mess to title. This link won't be relevant for this guy, so I'm going to comment it out. We no longer want to do the substring. We want to do the whole post, AKA just content. So again, if we had a really long blog content, this would make more sense. Okay, let's test it. Backfired. There we go, not backfired. Although it's not centered, so let's do that. Let's do an MX auto. So that's saying MX, X specifies the access, which is left and right. Go ahead and automatically give the same amount of uh, margin on the both sides of this particular guy. And centered, there we go, beautiful. Beautiful. Dope. Got that up and running in no time, y'all. We don't have a back button, so, oh, I don't know. What if we uncomment this guy, and instead of going link to, it can take us back to the front page, or we can create something else, actually, so that this is uh, Immediately put my own foot in my mouth. Let's get rid of that entirely, and put in a button that's going to have a class name of button and buttons color button secondary i don't know why just decided on that one go back to list something simple and it's going to have an on click function there we go which will be something a callback function to bind context with our arrow here and i could put it in a helper function but it's going to do one thing only it's going to fire off a function that's built in for us aka this dot props dot match dot history dot replace is a function that takes an argument of a valid route in which case we can do just to stay consistent i'll do double quotes there back to the home route which should be our list of blogs refresh ready backfire cannot replace of undefined cannot replace of undefined huh okay well that didn't work out did it 
cannot read property replace of undefined. Oh, pfft. it's not dot mash dot history. It's just this dot props dot history. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ha! There we go. Dope. Who shot first, Han or Greedo? It's Han. Don't say Greedo. If anyone says Greedo, I'm gonna find you and destroy you. There we go. So yeah, now that's that's a really really simple blog app, but it's full stack. It has the database. It has a server that we've coded as an API that has a response, and we have a front end that handles that response and does some cool mapping and content for us. So that is a pretty solid basic little walkthrough of how I'd wire up my own blog app. So thank you guys for listening. I'm probably going to regret recording this because I'm going to watch it and then just facepalm on my mistakes and my stutterings and my ums and whatever that little white bar was there in the recording that I had mentioned earlier. If Now I'm actually double guessing if it was there or not. But hopefully this gives you guys an idea of how to quickly get up and running with the full stack boilerplate and your DB connection. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Just smash that like button. Uh, I don't think it'd be out of the ordinary here to ask if we can get like 150,000 likes on this guy. It would be great. So appreciate it, guys. Bye.